if in, in the university, we, we need to open our eyes and see who's actually across from us and not assume, for example, that a student doesn't know anything until you tell them. <laughs> Like that, that is not useful. It's also not accurate because students arrive with at least 18 years of life experience. <laughs> I feel like it's very easy to get very existential and vague about teaching, but I really want to bring it back to like the concrete, like what do students want, what do teachers want, and how do we form these partnerships? The Steely Podcast Pedagogy. Hi, welcome back to the Steely Podcast. I'm Claire Hogan, and filling in for Jacob Hall is... Oh, uh, I'm Jacob Hall. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Sometimes I'm Katie Shinas, but today I'm Jacob Hall. Today, this is Jacob Hall. And um, today we're going to be talking about pedagogy, actually. So we've got a couple cool segments coming up. If you don't know what that word means, I didn't either before talking to a bunch of people about it. So that's pretty fun. I knew. <laughs> Thanks, Katie. Yeah, I mean, Jacob. Jacob. The Steely podcast pedagogy can you pronounce this name <laughs> Ped- pedagogy what do you know what this word means nope <laughs> can you pronounce this word is it a pedagogy or something or pedag? yeah do you know what this word means no i've heard of it but i don't know what that means classic pedagogy did you know that pedagogy it comes from the greek word <laughs> Um, working at Steely, I love Steely very, very much, but the word pedagogy is really tossed around as if any of us really know what it means. Um, I have had to Google it on thesaurus.com like so many times. Um, and I think that that makes it really inaccessible for people who want to learn about um, teaching and learning because I think the goal of this podcast for me is to make it a very accessible space for both professors and for students. And I feel like it's very easy to get very existential and vague about teaching, but I really want to bring it back to like the concrete, like what do students want, what do teachers want, and how do we form these partnerships? I say pedagogy, I think. Yeah. Pedagogical. Pedagogy. Yeah. I say pedagogy too. I say, I, I say pedagogy. I also say pedagogy. <laughs> pedagogy. My dad actually, he was like, I said the word pedagogy when I was on a f- the phone with him today, and he's like, wait, what does that mean? And I was like trying to explain it in this really terrible nebulous way. And he's Greek. He's very much like in that that part of my big fat Greek wedding where it's like, it comes from the Greek word. And he was like, <laughs> break down the Greek for me. And I was like, okay, well, it's pedo, which is like from bides, which just means child. And that's where we get a lot of stuff related to education. And then goji, logos, where it's a study of education. And if, if I'm getting this wrong, cut this out. I'm begging you. <laughs> but um, it was just, you know. Oh my goodness, going back to like our pet peeves from earlier that we were sharing, I think that word is my pet peeve. It is my least favorite <laughs> word ever. Pedagogy? Yeah, I say it different every time. It's There's no right reason Sam to likes it. to mix it up. Sam likes uh, to add a little fresh. spice, you know? <laughs> New challenge. Instead of saying pedagogy as little as possible, it's just say it differently every single time we say it. Yeah, that I can do. Classic pedagogy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Stemming from my original hatred of the word pedagogy, I decided to learn a little bit more about what it actually means. So I sat down with our very own Mark Hofer and Adam Barger here at Steely to learn about what pedagogy means in and out of the classroom. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so good. So good. I'm Adam Barger. I'm the Associate Director for Academic Innovation here at Steely. I'm Mark Hofer. I'm the Director of Steely and a faculty member in the School of Education. Wonderful. So the impetus of this conversation was that I said on the last podcast episode, or no, I said earlier um, that I don't particularly like the word pedagogy Mm -hmm. because I feel like it's very esoteric. And when you say it, nobody really knows what it means. But I'm hoping to get out of this conversation that I get a better understanding of what pedagogy actually means. So do we want to start off with like, what does pedagogy mean to you? I, I... It's funny. The very first time I ever heard this term was as an undergrad history major. Mm. And I was in a class and there was a visiting professor from South Africa. Mm. And I remember, um, it was funny, he said two things that has stuck with me for 30 years or whatever (laughs) it's been. One of which was, he said, a professor is one who professes to know. Mm. I am a pedagogue. And I thought, oh, what is that? I didn't know what that was. He says, I practice pedagogy. He said, and I can't, I was tra- telling Adam about this earlier. I can't remember if this was a, um, like, 
South African origin or just sort of his understanding hmm. of the concept, but he said a pedagogue is someone who walks with a learner. They have a responsibility to care for, watch out for, guide, and but also to learn with the hmm. learner. And I thought that was kind of an interesting, an interesting take because over time it had become sort of a pejorative term that's like a, a pedagogue or ped pedagogy is more pedantic mm. like that it's basically filling of the pail kind of thing yeah and it was that was a really interesting way to be introduced to it because so that sort of shaped my view of pedagogy all these years mm. of thinking that it's not just the sage on the stage you know right. imparting your knowledge but that you work with your students and with your learners to come to new understandings you know that the faculty member often has deep you know content experience and expertise but that you still learn together so yeah. that, that that idea of walking with the mm. learner has always stuck with me over these like thirty, and that was actually one of the reasons why I decided to become a high school teacher. Wow! Just that one, you know, kind of lecture, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So you're like, I really want to like shape the lives of of these people that I'm teaching. Yeah. So, but that's a very like Adam is going to swoop in with a much better, <laughs> more substantive definition. But that was just it was just interesting to me that it's like. There's different ways to think about this mm -hmm. term, I think, anyway. So, Adam, now, correct Yeah, me. no, no, I, I really like that. I'm glad you went first. That's much more, um, it's probably much more interesting than what I'm about to say. <laughs> no, no, no. So, thank you, Mark. So, pe pedagogy... <laughs> well, you're the funnier one, so, you know. Yeah, we'll see. Pedagogy, the word, um, definitely is not uh, all-inclusive of what we do in mm -hmm. teaching and learning. So, to Mark's point, that's, that's an important distinction. The word itself just simply means the... The methods or, or means of teaching. That's it. Hmm. And it has the PED at the front ped because oftentimes uh, it's used in reference to teaching students who are oftentimes younger hmm. than the teacher or professor. So this is the idea of teaching those younger than you and the methods you use to teach those younger than you. Um, however, that's not really very helpful because <laughs> There's all kinds of methods. Yeah. And so what you will often hear us talk about is not so much the pedagogy, but the pedagogical decisions <laughs> uh -huh. and they're about. So pedagogical decisions or sometimes called instructional decision making, hmm. that's another layer of pedagogy. It's how do you decide what to do? How do you walk with those learners and come alongside them uh, and, and the methods behind it? And then the last thing I'll say is there is like another field it never really caught on in my view but it's definitely still out there called andragogy mm -hmm. oh and it's the idea that <laughs> if pedagogy is teaching those that are younger uh -huh. andragogy is teaching adults oh. and are there different methods or practices or instructional decisions that are made when teaching adults hmm. that's a whole nother tangent but mm -hmm. since it's related to the word i thought i'd throw it in there no that is interesting so where does where does college fall in that right because it's obviously mm -hmm. teaching college yeah. students is different than teaching high school but we're not i don't know some people don't consider us fully adults right <laughs> um i can legally buy alcohol now which is very exciting but some <laughs> some college students cannot um so where does that fall in terms of teaching like children versus adults it's a great question, actually, yeah. to Adam's point about andragogy, there there are like active arguments mm. about what is the proper term for university professors. Is it pedagogy? Is it andragogy? So like, I think there's disagreement. Mm. And I think the reality is there's, you know, it's, it's a continuum. It's right. not. Because obviously the way, the kinds of uh, instructional decisions you make, the strategies you use with third graders is very different than ninth graders, which is very different than master's students mm -hmm. at a university. So like there's sort of a continuum mm. and, you know, I think the the distinctions are probably not totally crucial, but recognizing, I think I'll add one more thing to, as we, before we kind of dive into kind of back and forth. <laughs> the other thing that's interesting about pedagogy is that it looks different both at different points in time, but also in different disciplines. Mm. So the kinds of instructional choices I make when I'm teaching a history course and the values that kind of um, uh, seep into that are, are my instructional goals and my aims, you know, beyond just teaching the content, but right. sort of what I want students to take away with them would likely be very different than in a science class. Hmm. Or if I'm teaching, um, you know, a linear algebra, the strategies, the methods, the purposes, the goals, and the outcomes are all different. So pedagogy is not like a static thing. It's something that is very contextually dependent mm. and very uh, disciplinary in perspective. It's kind of more like a spectrum than one mm -hmm. point. 
Mm -hmm. Got it, got it. And so we've now we've kind of defined what pedagogy is, which is good for me because I frankly did not know beyond the dictionary definition. Um, but I understand why professors, why teachers would want to know about pedagogy. Why is that important for students to understand what pedagogy is? How does that connect to learners? Hmm. That's an interesting these, question. These are, these are too hard. <laughs> it's like Friday but afternoon. I threw, right? I threw you a softball now. about what it <laughs> That's is. Good point, yeah. so. so I think that um, in, the, in the college world, at university level, we fall into those disciplinary silos that Mark was talking about, hmm. you know, whether it's history or... Uh, English or these other disciplines and sometimes education the process of education teaching and learning is not fully included so you know a sociologist studies sociology an economist studies economics yes okay well what do you call someone who studies the scholarship of teaching and learning <laughs> well, so what I what I refer to myself is as an educationalist and that, and it's an actual term. It's like used that. more internationally than here in America because we will sometimes confuse uh, a scholar of education, educationalist, hmm. with an educator. Right. Okay. Hmm. So all my colleagues here at William & Mary are educators, but sociologists are not educationalists. Hmm. And economists are not sociologists. And so what students might be able to take from that is um, they're – Professors are content experts in these areas, and so if they have an interest in education, the process of teaching and learning, or the organizations around education, policies, leadership, those types of things, there is a discipline for that that they can study and learn more about it. Uh, and that is the discipline from which we draw our practices and how we coach others along. Or if we give a workshop, we're going to be drawing from that discipline. And so students can maybe take a bit of confidence that you know, we're not making it up as we go, usually, sometimes, <laughs> but usually we're not making it up. Uh, but also, it's something they could be interested in and do a deeper dive. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And when you're talking with different faculty members, um, I think we talk a lot about, among the students, um, a lot about, like, which are, like, quote-unquote good professors and which are, quote-unquote, mm. bad professors. Is that something that you see as kind of, like, some people have this um, innate skill towards teaching? Is that something that you can study? Like you were talking about pedagogy. Like how do you develop your teaching skills? What does that process look like? Man, this is so on point. Yeah, it's a, it's a really <laughs> good question. I'll, I'll start now. And then Go you, for it. Uh, so, you know, you, you hear teaching referred to as both an art and a science, mm -hmm. right? There definitely is a science to it. As Adam said, there's a huge, you know, uh, uh, repository of knowledge and, and studies and research at all different fields about, you know, what are different approaches and how, how do they work with different populations and so forth. And there are principles mm. that can be derived from that. There are, um, you know, things like, uh, course organization and clarity and clear clarity and communication and different assessment practices. So there's an aligning your, uh, goals for your students with the content, with the assessment, you know, and so forth. There are, there are definitely like sort of more things that land more on the science side of things. But of course there's also an art to it as well, which is, like I think of that as being uh, adapting what I do based on, you know, how my students respond. So maybe that's over the course of the semester. Maybe it's in the course of a single class session. Mm. I can see confused expressions. Well, I need in that moment, I need to make a decision, as Adam was saying earlier, to change my approach perhaps. So that's where some of that is like thinking in action or mm. pedagogical reasoning in action. It's actually an area of scholarship within pedagogy. Yeah. So like that's, that's one way I think to think about it. Yeah, I, I think, th so I refer to teaching as a craft, usually, because mm -hmm. it's that mix of art and science. Mm. But it kind of depends on the crowd, um, <laughs> because you, everyone knows that there's some teachers or professors who, whether they've had formal training in education or not, are just really good. They're, they're just effective communicators. They're engaging. Uh, this is why we know that you know, TED Talks work, even right. though they're, they're basically just a lecture. But they are designed in such a way that they recruit uh, teachers that are really good at that format. Mm. And um, it's a really engaging 18 minutes. But there's also the opposite end of the spectrum. We have folks who, uh, certainly not here at William & Mary, but at some other <laughs> no universities. Um, we have folks who you know, have not had that training, but they're also maybe not as gifted in communication. Uh, they're not as comfortable in mm. front of students. Uh, they're not maybe as quick on their feet, as Mark was saying, with their decision making on the fly. Um, and so uh, I think for, for that crowd who's new to teaching and recognizes that they can 
hone their craft, uh, those are things that we can, there's things that we can do to expose them to uh, exemplars. Mm. Like here's what we know works from the literature, from the science and the research, but also here's kind of what it looks like. Right. You know, here, here's, go see a colleague do this, mm. be encouraged, go observe them that kind of thing. And so you, there's definitely a, a spectrum of folks on the craft of teaching, hmm. uh, but everyone can improve. Yeah, absolutely. And so for both of you who are sort of pedagogical experts in a way, <laughs> right, um, what what drives you to learn about pedagogy? What drives you to teach other people about pedagogy? What is like the core of it for you that you think that teaching is so important? I'm ready. Want me to go so you can think? <laughs> yeah, I, I can see go. the wheels turning. There's like yeah, steam coming out of your ears. Yeah, I'm trying to Okay. So one of my favorite quotes about um, learning or education, I think it's Ozabel, but I'm not sure, said that learning is individual sense-making. Hmm. Okay? So that if you were in my class, Claire, you would be individually making sense of things. Right. And hopefully I'm helping you. But the learning process is yours. And so my job would be to help make the environment in the exercises right for your individual hmm. uh, sense making and, um, and another good one is uh, I gotta get it right um, metacognition is the engine of learning so metacognition is the awareness that you have as a learner of how you learn like where your weak spots are where your strong spots are uh, what you can do to improve uh, I see all those things in my domain to help set you up for success hmm. as a student. So that, that drives me, is, is helping folks make individual sense of a particular topic. Right, that's that's interesting because I know we talked about pedagogy as kind of like a spectrum depending on different disciplines, depending on different teaching styles, and so it also ties back to learning, right, as an individual process, mm -hmm. so it kind of varies person to person. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think that is sort of a similar way. I think that's what excites me, hmm. is trying to think about being responsive and trying to, like I think about it as creating learning experiences right. or opportunities to learn. Mm -hmm. Because I, I'm very, in my field of educational technology and innovation, that's my academic field, it's constantly changing. Mm. There is, I mean, there's certainly, there's a body of research that informs, but as tools change and as our goals change and as context changes in classrooms, it's, a, it's an ever-evolving discipline. So, like, I never am under the illusion that I have all the answers. Right. So my goal is to create experiences that would engage students to think for themselves, to tie, you know, new concepts that they're learning in class to their experiences they've already had, to ask questions, to work with each other, to develop their own understanding. So I think that's – but different people – like, you, you asked a little while ago about, you know, um, the students – you know, that they have their favorite professors and professors that are less favorite. <laughs> and that's in part because they learn, students have different preferences for right. their learning. So, you know, my goal and my challenge, I guess, is trying to figure out how can I create learning experiences that are as engaging as possible for the range of learners in my classes and finding ways for them to have choice and have agency in their learning. So, like, that's what fires me up to think about it because mm -hmm. it is, it's such a, and I guess the, the other piece of it is, it's. I started at William and Mary teaching almost all in our teacher education program. So teaching college students to prepare to to take over high school classroom or middle teaching school classroom. Teaching about teaching. Teaching about <laughs> teaching. Exactly. And um, it was when I started doing this, and I would go and observe them teaching. You know, I, I've developed a, a strong sense of empathy for them that mm. it is extremely challenging. Teaching is a highly complex right. because, it, you know, you're working with individuals and, you know, and all of the different, you know, um, time of day and, you know, the, the topic and their, you know, is it a major class, is it an elective, you know, all those different variables make it really, really challenging. So I'm always very, I like to study pedagogy and work with people um, to, to think about teaching in different ways because I recognize how hard it is. Mm. And I think that's another thing that is important to think about with pedagogy is just empathy, that it requires empathy on the part of the instructor towards the students, but also to the students towards the instructor. Because what faculty are trying to do is, is really difficult. It's yeah. very challenging. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for our wonderful discussion about pedagogy. I feel like I have a much better understanding of what it is and why it's important now. So. 
But you have to give us at least something to go on from the student perspective. Like, yeah. Oh, like, wow. Give well, us, you can't give us, get away that easy. Yeah, oh, gosh. Give us some marching orders of like, you know, I really wish <laughs> there's one thing professors should know, it's X, you know. What, what would that be? Um, about your own individual sense making, your own learning about opportunities. About my own individual learning yeah. experience. When you walk into a class, how do you know that it's going to be a class that you that's going to be meaningful for you mm -hmm. or you're really going to enjoy? Mm -hmm. What is it about the way that professor teaches that clues you in that, well, for me, this is going to be an awesome class? Yeah, uh, I honestly think it's just that sense of enthusiasm. Like, I have some professors who are just so excited to talk about what they're talking about. Um, I mostly take math classes, and sometimes those can be a little dry. Um, but when the professor is really excited about what they're talking about, it just makes the time fly, and it's mm. so lovely. So even when we're just row reducing matrices or something, um, it can really be absolutely lovely to just see that spark of excitement and talk about why what we're doing is important and how it connects to other disciplines. So that's something that I really value. That's great. Very cool. Always a good reminder. <laughs> yep. The Steely Podcast Pedagogy. Classic pedagogy. Pedagogy, um, which I learned can be pronounced different ways. Can be pedagogy, can be pedagogy, whatever you prefer. Um, pedagogy? Yeah, I'm, well, not that one. <laughs> that's not allowed. Um, I guess, what, what, is, what does that mean to you guys in terms of, you know, professors that you've interacted with, like the best classes you've had? What does that kind of mean? Yeah, I guess for me, uh, Peter and I had a conversation earlier this week, um, and we were talking about uh, pedagogy in terms of, like, the methodology behind it mm. and the ways that we learn and the ways that professors teach to us um, and how that can be effective in some instances, but it can also be, like, really ineffective. Um, we talked about different classes that we've been in and how um, we found that when there was a lot of uh, communication present, when it was a lot of, you know, open communication between professors and students, there seemed to be a more effective pedagogy in place because it seemed like more learning was occurring. Mm. Have you ever, I mean, I feel like normally the system that we sort of see is like you have these lectures based on maybe a slides, you have exams, you have quizzes, you have essays. Have you ever had a professor take a really unique uh, way of doing pedagogy and how did that kind of affect the class? Yeah, I think it's really interesting being like a, in the fine arts, mm. in mm -hmm. like an academic setting. Um, and I actually talked about this a lot with Joan Gavaller, who's doing um, research on performance and pedagogy. And I think that becomes a really interesting thing because at the end of the day, you do have to fit this very subjective, very personal thing into an academic setting. I mean, I'm here at a liberal arts college to study this. It's necessarily going to be different. So I think that's always been a very interesting journey to see how professors reconcile it and how we try to shift the focus onto the process of creation and the process of creativity and the process of finding it within while still having to, at the end of the day, put a very quantifiable number on things. Mm. Um, and I, I think it's something that a lot of, you know, fine arts, I know you do music and stuff, Grace. And so I feel like that's a very difficult thing and it can lead to this sense of like, oh, I really put my all into this performance and then I don't know if I got the grade I wanted or I really didn't feel great about this, but I somehow managed to check all the boxes and get an A. And mm. so I don't know if there is an easy answer to that, um, but, you know, there is definitely a lot of emphasis on discussion and really kind of getting into things. And a lot of what I've learned from those classes has not been reflected. Mm. I mean, I do well in those classes. And I'm not I'm not over here with like my C minus and like zip zap <laughs> zap class. But, you know, it's definitely a very complicated process. And a lot of the most important things I've learned are not the things that I was tested on or that are reflected mm. in my grades. And I think one thing that I found really interesting was that I kind of came into this thinking of pedagogy as like, oh, this very stuffy, boring thing. But you the more you get, I time. did. That's what inspired the episode is because I said it was my arch nemesis. <laughs> um, but now I'm kind of realizing like it's a lot, it's a lot deeper than I originally thought. And it really shapes our experiences as students, you know, depending on your discipline, depending on your professor, it really shapes like how you learn and what you get out of college, the place that, you know, we're spending thousands of dollars to come yeah. to, um, which is super interesting. So. Some beautiful character development <laughs> wow. on the Steely Podcast. Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm being less negative by the day. Wow, <laughs> crazy. The Steely Podcast.
Oh, I guess I'm going first then. You are. I'm not, oh, okay. I'm not getting <laughs> tricked again. Okay. Well, hi, I'm Grace Helmick, and I'm a senior, and I'm a student partner here with Steely. And I'm Peter Rizzo. I am a junior, and I'm also a student partner here at Steely. Gasp. No way. Yeah. Is that well, how you got on this podcast? No, I actually I won a contest. Oh, they do those. Yeah. Anyway, well, we are here today to talk about pedagogy, pedagogy. Pedagogy. Now, I actually, I know a lot about pedagogy, and I... I know a lot because yeah. I definitely knew you about definitely, it going I in. know what the definition is, Pedagogy too. Pedagogy is, you know, um, it's a noun. Um, yeah. The method and practice of, give me one second. Um, yeah. Pedagogy. The oh, method good. and practice of teaching, especially as an academic subject or theoretical concept. Now, unlike Grace, I knew a lot about this going in. Mm. I did not Google it just now. No, not um, at all. That was your voice. You have yeah. two voices. Can you do that voice again? That was really impressive, and I, I I'm don't know how to do that. Pedagogy. Wow, You're so welcome. cool. Um, I think, you know, eventually, I think with enough study you can get to where I'm at, but I think as of now, like, you, you're, you should be thankful that I'm here. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I agree. Um, so could you, could you use that in a sentence? Yeah, I think that... Um, Pedagogy is a... Wow, you're, te- you're getting... You're texting during this recording session, Grace. <laughs> No, I, I'm just I'm just trying to get on your level. Um, no, yeah, of course. No, but for those who don't know, pedagogy is the study of Grace. Pedag- you, you're gonna have to stop getting texts if you're gonna do this bit. Okay, I'm gonna put the pedagogy. bit. I'm gonna put the bit down for a second because we have to start fresh okay, yeah, because I'm you sorry. keep getting texts. This is an issue. I didn't, I'm usually not this popular. <laughs> Yes, pedagogy. Yeah, what Grace was attempting to do is play in the space with me and do a bit, but she just keeps getting so many texts, and again, she is not at my level because I don't get not, any texts. I was get, I was getting to that, but thanks for bringing it You're up. You're so welcome. Um, pedagogy. We um, have experienced that a bit now, just because even like as student partners, I feel like we. When like this isn't a an outright like classroom setting, we still get shades of that like in our shades of what shades of pedagogy because I think um, how we all work like there's the awareness that like all of the student partners here like have different strengths so there's a a desire to not like put everyone in the same box like it's not as if everyone is doing what we're doing now and recording stuff for the podcast because they are doing stuff that is better suited for like their skill set uh yes 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 so i i still i'm gonna be honest i think pedagogy is something that i struggle with because it sounds pretentious what's something you struggle with um that one thank you you're welcome i i would still play with in the space with you but i'm still too popular right now i'm getting texts so i'm not gonna play in that space just but cu- just cue me when you need it to be said i, I will i'll point to you play in the space with me Peter. Hey, thank you um it's something that i think is kind of talked about a lot but do we e- oh, oh, sorry that's too much um i got excited <laughs> but do we ever actually like know what it means know what what means pedagogy there we go um I think it's something that is talked about. It's something that we have lectures on. It's something that we hold workshops for, um, that new teachers uh, and faculty want to be most effective and having the best pedagogy um, that they can. Um, But when it comes down to it, really, all that... Empathy. Sorry, that was last week. (laughs) Really, all that... Pedagogy. Really, all that... Pedagogy is about is the most effective way that we can learn and that we can teach others. So really, when we break it down, all that pedagogy is is just a big fancy word for learning and for teaching and the method in which we do that. And for empathy. To connect it to last week, this was all so well thought out. Pedagogy is vastly improved. Hi, I'm Grace, and I'm here with Professor Joan Gavaller, and we are talking today about performance pedagogy and essentially having a conversation about how, in some ways, it feels like performance pedagogy is a paradox and that the performance aspect, in some ways, can push against the pedagogy. Uh, So, Professor Gavaller, what are your thoughts on that? How does 
pedagogy and performance go hand in hand, or do they? Well, I I am not sure that they push against each other. I do think we have collective habits of thought about what performance is and what pedagogy is supposed to look like that that prevents us from noticing that performance as a realm of learning is already inherent in any classroom and we can pull out those elements anytime you ask a student to introduce themselves on the first day of class that's performance pedagogy it helps classmates know each other it helps the teacher know the students and it helps the student realize they have a story because they were just asked and they just answered the question and it sets up a perspective that that students will have a relationship to the material that they're studying and and if you dig a little deeper finding ways of expressing what is being learned in more than one mode beyond reading and writing um, finding ways of working collaboratively uh, finding ways of of evaluating what the experience its significance was and and providing feedback their performance pedagogy opens up the pedagogical toolbox for any professor well we met because you took modern too yeah <laughs> and i took note of oh my goodness there is someone with this huge skill set uh, around video because of what you did with the projects in class uh, so then when i was developing two pieces it was fall of 20, it was a year ago mm -hmm. yeah, right and i remember asking you to be my partner on my solo and then i think Roy also brought you in to be one of the videographers for my group piece. So mm -hmm. I Am Moved was my solo and Connected was the group piece. So, and that, that solo was uh, really a, a collaboration. Yeah, I think something that I learned, um, and I feel like this is something that students always joke about, but like realizing your professor is a person outside of the classroom. <laughs> And understanding that not only are they a person, but that they're, especially in terms of being an artist. And, you know, I I would consider myself an artist myself. And being able to collaborate with a fellow artist on that level, I think was so cool. To be able to truly do something that was collaborative. And instead of like a top-down approach, a more, you know, back and forth of being able to pass things off. And especially on the confronted piece, the digital uh, piece that we worked on this past spring, there was so much back and forth of, okay, do we like this? Do we want to take it in this direction? Or, you know, what, what could we do to make this better? Or which do we want to do to push this aesthetic more? And I feel like for me, that was so eye-opening to be like, no, there's, this felt more like the adult and real world as opposed to being within like the collegiate realm. If in the university, we, we need to open our eyes and see who's actually across from us and not assume, for example, that a student doesn't know anything until you tell them. <laughs> like that, that is not useful. It's also not accurate because students arrive with at least 18 years of life experience <laughs> and it's true they're in a different phase of life um, but I have learned my, my company is multi-generational. My co-artistic director is 24 years younger than I am. And, uh, but he's a peer. And, and I think that the last eight years of that company has also helped reinforce that to find that equal stance when working uh, between students and faculty has immense value. Yeah, no, for sure. And I think it's also so neat to see, at least from my perspective, to push the boundaries of film and editing beyond something that is purely a narrative, um, a short story, an interview, and to push the mediums in all directions. I feel like for you, it was pushing 
the bounds of what dance and what movement could be. For me, it was literally pushing the frames and it was pushing editing to be something that was I'd, I'd never done before. And I feel like it was so neat for me to witness that, you know, these little boxes that we make of this is what dance is, this is what film is, this is what music is, this is what poetry is. It, it's not all that clean cut and it can get so messy and it can be so beautiful when you push those bounds and you mash it all together. You know, I think for me that was so illuminating and inspiring was the word you use. And I, I agree just to see, you know, especially going back to talking about how like connecting with your own work that, you know, there, the expression that you have can take so many different forms and being willing to experiment with that in a way that feels, you know, you can try different pathways and see what works and what doesn't. And maybe different things will work and maybe different things won't. But just experimenting, I think, was something that I really learned um, and have learned through working with you and continue to as we're working on this projection yeah. piece. <laughs> the Steely Podcast Pedagogy. Well, Claire, how was it learning about pedagogy with me, Jacob Hall? It was great, Jacob. Thanks so much for being here. Um, If you liked what you heard, feel free to subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you can find our show. And tune in next week for a conversation about community. With me, Jacob Hall. (laughs) He's going to listen back to this and be like, is this what you think of me? (laughs) I love you so much, Jacob. I promise. No, Jacob, we love you. You're just not here right now, so we can make fun of you a little bit. Okay, anyway. <laughs> Bye. Bye. That was awesome. Thank you so much. Good work, folks.